All right, Jana, Malik. welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're another uh, episode, or not episode, I don't like episode. We're in another uh, curated conversation where I just want to have these conversations around things that we love in our industry and maybe in business or creative. And so thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. How are you doing today? You brought us some really good boba tea. So Yes, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to be able to share my passion for boba off, tea. Off to a yeah. good start. <laughs> um, now, I already have this extreme love for you because we, we you know, for me, my big le love language is food. And um, one of the pretty much the first time we kind of really hung out outside of doing a wedding mm -hmm. was in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And we took, uh, as for engaged, and we took a little stroll down and you kind of showed me around and we got, um, was it a muffalata? Yep. And, uh, was the dessert beignets. we had? Beignets. So, so you gotta you gotta tell the story. I know right? this. Okay. Let's, let's, where where the muffalatas <laughs> came from? The muffalatas came from like a corner store, like Central Grocery. C Central Grocery. That's what it is. That's right. Except for they were under construction, so there was the God, sign yeah. on the door that said, "Go next door to the liquor <laughs> shop." And ask the counter person for a sandwich. Ask, yeah, we went over and where they pulled out like a little fridge or oh, something. Oh like, yeah, really? like underneath the underneath the counter. It was like we did a drug deal. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> but but in return, the greatest sandwich of all time. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. it was it was really good. So I already we already connect already, and I was like, anyone that can show me where good food is, I'm just like yes. Always always so that, good. That for was that. a good time. But uh, where where so start off like where are you originally from like how'd you yeah. end up here in florida uh, i'm a navy brat so i was born in pensacola florida and then moved a variety of places to include japan north carolina maryland mississippi and then my dad retired when i was 11 and we stayed in mississippi for a few more years and then he was transferred so when i was 16 years old I got to move high schools um, in my yeah. junior year, halfway yeah, through. Yes, middle is. I'm sure you were happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I terrorized them sufficiently. Um, so we moved from small town Mississippi to Fort Lauderdale. Actually, I went to Douglas High School. If you remember the the um, yeah. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas had the shooting a couple years yeah. ago. It's my high school. Um, oh man. So I spent a year and a half there, um, and then when I graduated, I went up to Gainesville for school and then yeah. back down to Orlando for my first job and oh my god back down to Fort Lauderdale for another one <clears throat> and eventually it ended here mm -hmm. so do you like traveling or is it kind of a necessary thing that's been a part of your life um I think <clears throat> it's I don't even think it's a like like or dislike it is what it is yeah. like it's always just been what I've known um I have learned to appreciate the skill set that it gave me I was constantly dropped in new schools I can talk to just about anybody. Yeah. Um, so from that perspective, uh, really valuable. From a different angle, of course, I think it's the first time that I've been able to put down roots for longer than two years, here. maybe. Yeah, oh, here. Yeah, that's dope. So me and my husband now have a house and the business. You're rooted, and, yeah. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> so. do, you, do you feel like even that experience of going to all these different places and living there kind of – speaks to what you do now like as far as culturally and bringing these different experiences to yeah i think so and, <clears throat> and i also think that it allows you an opportunity to maybe even be a little bit more open-minded so because i've met so many different people in so many different places like i i always enter a new place ready to learn mm. you know i i learned that <clears throat> early on you can't walk into a new place and be the know-it-all or the best at everything yeah. or like you know it's a quick way to be shut down so um even when we work weddings and i go into another city i approach it from a i'm a guest here can yeah. you help me um which does uh -huh. help to build teams and loyalty and we have a few markets that have popped up across the country just because of the way that we come in i think a little bit more humbly than maybe i mean that's it's tough to be mode. really good at what you do with the with that expertise and still be humble and human and empathetic and ask for help <clears throat> yeah people That's respond tough, really well the tough balance to find i mean i've we've, we've done i mean i we've done a couple with you as a mm -hmm. company but um i remember one vividly and i was just like Jana's Jana's so easy to work with and you you come with a with an empathy that i appreciate and it's not like not just about the result of the day but also about the how we yeah. work together and i really appreciated that <clears throat> yeah, my dad, um, my dad always taught me about servant leadership. He said, if you are a leader and you are lucky enough to be a leader, it is your responsibility to serve those who are around you. So it was mm. never, 
it was never the top dog mentality like the people that are the people that are around me and are working on a project I I can't do this without you so therefore if I can help you if I can show um my gratitude in any way like that's what I'm here for not the opposite like I really work for everybody else yeah you know that reminds me of a conversation that I heard um at DJ Collective it was a conference DJ conference in Nashville that went to last year and um it was this conversation between three DJs and three planners Mm. and one of the big really the hot topic of that whole session was planners kind of coming into because you're the one in charge that day and so you can take that power and really wield it whichever way you want and you can be like i'm the i'm the one in charge you listen to me or it can still be a make me make us feel like we're a part of the team it was a really good conversation because a lot of djs felt like planners kind of walked all over them Mm. and a lot of there was planners in there who were a little bit more aggressive and some who were a little bit more maybe humble or soft about it but that dynamic between you being a planner and your vendors that work together, like how how do you make that work on a day of or even in the process? Yeah, well, um, I never really think of myself as being in charge. I'm the point of contact. So mm. I'm here to solve all the problems that you have. Like that's my yeah. job is to be the problem solver so that you can do your job better. Damn. So it's never really like a I'm in charge. Um, Cause that doesn't serve anybody. Like it doesn't serve yeah. me. I mean, already that posture like, is kind of on a power mm-hmm. trip. I guess if, if you're that kind of person, maybe it serves, but, um, I, I very much enjoy seeing other people thrive. It's part mm-hmm. of like just my love language. And so I would much rather be on the side of what can I do to make your job easier. And then I also like people th- seeing people thrive in their business as experts. So I don't claim to be a DJ. I don't claim to be a florist. Like these are all things that I might have like a pocket of knowledge of, but how great that I have these partners that get to carry all of that knowledge for me. And I don't have to be the one that knows everything. I get to be the creator of the teams that, that have all of this and and can really create the magic for my client. Not me. Otherwise I'd be one of those like one woman shows with the symbol. And well, it happens. And that's the the, the honest truth is that, it happens or you you show up to a wedding one day and it's like oh they're in charge okay they've let it be known and it's their way or the highway but i can tell you that like for me at least you're not going to get the best results out of me that way you know like sure you know it's not i'm not going to feel like a part of the team and i'm going to feel like you're kind of overstepping and i, I want to like work together and and make it happen together you know and yeah. so uh it's it's tough though i, I think that conversation that i overheard at DJC was uh, was pretty intense, and it let me know just how how much people run into that. So I appreciate you that the way that you carry yourself with a wedding, like, like thank you. You know, it's really cool. I think cool. there's a lot of power behind why. Um, like, I think that a, a lot of battles could be won simply by asking why. Yeah. Why do you want to do this? Why do you think it should be done that way? And then having that discussion, because you know, it doesn't mean that you're right or I'm right or you're wrong or or I'm wrong. It just really yeah. means that maybe there are two differing points that just need to be like laid out, and, and an understanding can come from both sides. Yeah. So. Spe- so speaking of why, why did you uh, why and kind of how did you get into this thing called wedding plan- <laughs> wedding design planning? So um, a million years ago, when I graduated college, I started at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando Grand Lakes, um, which is a huge property. It has like 1,600 rooms, huge property. And I started at the front desk. And like within three months, they were like, we're sending you to events where you can run for 14 hours. <laughs> and you're just they knew it. They were there. like, oh. Yeah, because I was just very, very high energy all the time, like just projects, projects, yeah. projects. And they were like, just release you into yeah. the wild go um and so i never had an intention on being in events i kind of fell into it organically but mm. i would work from 6 a.m until 8 p.m every single day and on the weekends we would have weddings so most of it was conferences and right. and more corporate work um and then the saturdays i would get to see the brides and talk to the brides and it was mm-hmm. all very exciting um and so i was in that world for a few years and then i was pulled out um by someone from the hertz headquarters who saw management uh skills that they wanted to put into hertz and so i had a really really hard time leaving i was very am very brand loyal to the ritz carlton and the ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen but 
Ooh, I love it. I, I love yeah. that. That 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 I I got halfway through that book. Oh, the gold standard. The gold standard. Yeah. Yeah. That's I gotta a good finish one. it. But man, what a a life changing concept. And, yeah, and, and they mantra. talk a lot about servant yeah. leadership there too. Um, but uh, yeah, so they wanted me to come over and work on the customer experience for the platinum program, which is yeah. like the highest level for Hertz loyalty um, that you can get. And so that's what brought me to Southwest Florida. And I was nice. here and very much bled yellow working <laughs> full time. And they, they were so good to me. They, they paid for my master's degree. They sent me all over the world. I mean, I was doing trips to Europe, Germany, wow. like all, just anywhere because I was managing certain programs and launches and things like that. Gotcha. So I'll always be grateful for the experience that they gave me. Um, but February of 2020, I went to a dinner with a friend and she had a friend and a couple of other friends. And there was one woman who was talking about how her daughter's wedding was supposed to be in three weeks at the end of the month. And she no longer had a venue because their clubhouse had construction, something like mm -hmm. that. And they needed to find a new place. And I very much like pushed my way into this woman's life and was like, I'm going to help you. Like, not, not looking for pay, not thinking this was anything other than just an opportunity to help somebody who, was crying and I'm like a, you know, if you cry, I cry kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, and so I spent the next three weeks with her and her daughter just finding wow. a new place. And it was very much a little backyard wedding. It was so sweet. Um, and I remember that day on the wedding, I was everything. I was like the, the cook, the caterer, the baker, like anything and everything that you could imagine. I had every role mm -hmm. and I drug my husband out and we were just running around like crazy people. But when we went out to the car that night, and it had been like a 15 hour day. And I remember I had not worn the appropriate shoes like at Ooh. all. And I remember just sitting in my car thinking like, I, my back actually might break. <laughs> like, <Feet> radiating, just <laughs> it might throbbing. actually break. Oh my God. Um, but I had not been that happy in mm. so long. Not because I wasn't happy in what I was doing. I just didn't have the, it's hard to feel fulfillment over something that is as intangible as like a rental car like it just wasn't I didn't feel the passion yeah. that I did whenever I was standing there watching two people get married or you know whatever the case yeah. was so I went home and she had called me her hero so I was like "Ooh, the wedding hero so wow. I went home I went on to Zazzle or one of those and I printed myself some business cards and I went to work the next week and I was like yeah. I'm gonna do this on the side and I can probably make a whopping $500 a weekend <laughs> extra spending money if oh I you just thought it was this. like oh, oh I was, she I'm thought it was you. like that a little pocket change oh that's right it was just gonna be oh like a few God. hours here and there right. helping who needed it um and then a week later COVID went into shutdown they furloughed everyone in our building then uh, Hertz went bankrupt, and so they they shut it down. Everyone was let go. All the positions were dissolved, and I was sitting at home with every other marketing person in the entire United States. And I remember going on to like you know those job websites that you look at, and there were like three marketing <laughs> jobs open in the country. And I was like, there have got to be hundreds of thousands of people. Crazy. And these jobs probably weren't even real. It was just some listing that somebody yeah. forgot to take, take down. down. They they was not really up. Yep. And so my husband was like, well, if you could do anything, what would you do? And I said, well, I would either plan weddings or rescue dogs. And he was like, well, let's not let's plan and rescue adopt <laughs> all of the dogs in Fort Myers. Um, and so that was that. And I threw myself into it. I took an online marketing course by Sam Evans. Um, and that was it. Yeah. I just threw you, myself you had in. A pretty quick like ex ascension as far as i mean within two years of you starting i mean i heard your name a bunch of places i saw your weddings i'm like how I, when i when you told me that you've only been doing it for the amount of time i was just like i how like i just so where did that you already had the skill set i mean and you already were tapped into like wedding industry people that i looked up to or listened to so you were like you tapped in deeply very mm -hmm. quickly how did that happen for you? Are you just like that type of person to go and find it? Like what's your Yeah. Um, well part of part of the reason was when I took this course with Sam Evans, he had a couple of key now it's very general consulting course. So it's not wedding planner specific. Right. It's just like, hey, if you want to do something, you could sell Coca-Cola, like right. anything. Right. <clears throat> um, but a couple of things that he said was don't reinvent the wheel. Like 
Don't be that person that feels like they have to start here and like build every little piece. Like look for the person that is doing what you want to do and back hack it. So like uh, try to instead of thinking of like what are the steps one, two and three and four that I need to take, like find the person that's already done it and then map their steps backward and figure out what they did. And so that's yeah. what I did was I found a few key planners. Well, first of all, I went on the bride's top 100 planner list and I followed <laughs> every single planner, <laughs> all 100 of yes. them. And the same with the photographers. And I did that for Come Harper's on. Bazaar and any of them. And I started studying and I looked at everything that they were doing. How were they posting? How were they communicating with their clients? Where were they going? Engaged, like all of these things that they did. And that's what I did. And so um, we found partnerships within the community. We talked to people constantly. Yeah. And so I don't think that I had an example to set myself by locally. Pave your own way a little bit. Yeah, which actually probably helped because there was never, I was never comparing. Like there was never a comparison to anybody. It was just yeah. moving so forward. I think, <clears throat> so with Curate, you know, we have like, you know, we have a bunch of DJs. And so some of them, most of them now, we kind of build up from scratch. So like we'll train them and stuff. And so one of the big things I tell them in the beginning with, especially with hosting, cause they don't know, what do I say on the mic? I don't know. Like, you know, I say, look, man, when, cause they go out with all of our other DJs. So I go, man, just imitate for a little mm -hmm. bit. Like you don't know until you do, like you're going to say something like copy what I say, like w whether it's an intro or ladies and gentlemen, whatever, whatever it is that you see with me. And then you're going to find your own way. Like, yeah. so there's this kind of like, when you first start off, how did you find your unique look and design? Like, was it pretty like, were you experimenting with things? Like, how did you kind of hone in on who Jana is? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I think one of the things that I always knew is that I did not want to have a particular look for me. Ooh, and that was okay. really, really important to me. Um, I pride myself on creating experiences that uniquely reflect my clients. And I think nice. that came from the Ritz Carlton and wanting to really fine tune like the experience for each of the individuals that were sitting in front mm -hmm. of me. So we're all so different. Um, I'm I'm very different from you, who is yeah. very different from everybody yeah. else. And I didn't want to take my clients and jam them into m my. Puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's here, yeah. Here's the little capsule you fit inside of it. Right, right. So what I did was I actually start every, and to this day, I start every single client's journey off with a survey. And it's a lengthy survey. Like it takes them like an hour. And I want to know everything about them. I want to know everything from like, what are they most proud of, of themselves? Like, what is their best friend like? What are their hobbies? What do they spend their time doing? Mm. And then I take all of that and I thread it through on their customer journey. So it's very, very mm. much molded to them. So I don't think that there was ever a particular style that I had. I'm sure now you can probably say like, there are certain things that come out and sure. themes, but um, we do try to make sure that each of our designs and our customer experiences are unique to the person standing in front of us. Yeah, I mean, when, when uh, a couple comes to us, even on a, you know, a discovery call and they're like, you know, you know, may, they might ask questions because they might not even know what to ask me. And I'll say, you're like, like, what type of music do you play? And mm -hmm. it's like, yo, like I, I, we got before we can even talk about that. Like, like, where are you from? Right. <laughs> you know, right. like, like, where are you from? Where's your family coming from? Like, because that's going to all dictate that dance for it. Like, there's no obviously um, you're going to play the same song sometimes. But like every wedding for me is different. The energy, how I speak to the to the couple, how I speak to the to the guests, how I host, right. how I mix, when I mix, what songs I put when, like how I mix two songs together. Like it's very unique. And so for me to even answer that question, it's like, we got, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit before we get there, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it's really interesting because I have people that ask me a lot about authenticity and how do I maintain authenticity? Because there is this misconception that authenticity means that you pick a character that you are playing and you never divert from that character. You stick to the that's script. It. Like, to the, this, yeah. is, this is who I am. It's your avatar. I am who yeah. I am. Right. And that's not actually now differing opinions right sure. but for me what is it for you yeah what is it for that you? is that is not actually what i think authenticity is i think authenticity is a genuine connection with another human being and a lot of times in this mm. professional role i have to become who is going to make them feel the most comfortable so the way that i am going to speak to someone who comes to kiss to cake for example and maybe has a 
$30,000 budget, they're more on the what we call PIY, plan it yourself track, is going to be very different than someone who comes to me with a $300,000 budget, works 80 hours a week as a surgeon, they're and like, really no, doesn't want to speak to yeah, me that much. Yeah. And so I have to create authentic, genuine connections with both of them. And if I were to behave the same way same for way. both of them, I would fail. Yeah, I, I have people that, you know, will won't fill out the the you know open dancing part of like they're like hey we trust you fine yeah and, and i'll take it as long as you really do trust me yeah you know as long, i'll even make like i'll ask another question like okay is there anything that you don't like yeah and they go well we hate country and we right. hey well i should know that it's like a whole genre that's yeah, a whole genre <laughs> uh we don't want a lot of edm either and you know my husband doesn't really listen to hip-hop like maybe only 90s well right. now we're talking right now I got some info here. So, um, so because I, I don't mind that either. When you just say, hey, we, I don't want you to have to do my job for me as a DJ. Like, I don't want you to have to pick 100 songs that I'm going to play all night. Like, no, give me your vibe. Give me some must plays. And I'll take it from there, you know. So, yeah. but yeah, they have to give me something at least, you know. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think in order for me to be able to do my job to the best of my ability, I need to know who you are. And yeah. so what I do require is I require you to talk to me. It can be for five minutes once a month. So once a mm. month, even if it's while you're in your car driving to your next venture, let's get on the phone. Yeah. I can have my two or three bullet points of like, hey, here's where we are. I've sent you this. You know, that's yeah. it. But like, I do need you to talk to me because if you don't and I don't get that vision right and I am not understanding yeah. that perception of you correctly, you could show up and it's not it's yeah. not authentically you and that is a problem so what do you what do you love more i want to know do you love what do you love more do you love design more or do you love the planning oh i more? think i'm an equal yeah. right left brain person because actually today i geeked out on my aisle planner and i <laughs> said to my associate i was like god i, I used to work out of a binder so let's just put okay. that out okay. there right okay. so like when i think about how easy some of these systems have made it and how organized we can stay on like an yeah. online portal um that has me geeking out very hard but at the same time like i appreciate the different directions that you can take design and how you can really really reflect like so many different things within a design from your clients personalities mm. that i i don't know it would be a hard it would be a tough sell but i also think that's why i'm i'm a planner designer which not everybody is some people really focus more on design yeah. or just on planning well so. i'd say one of my i uh, unfortunately i couldn't be the dj but one of my guys, Flex, was a DJ mm -hmm. for a freaking, you killed this design. Like, it was in South Seas, it was for Courtney. Yep. Um, and what, the groom's name, Courtney and? Uh, TC. TC, okay. And, I mean, it was like back black background arches from Pleath, was it from Plethos? Uh-huh, yep, they painted I them mean, black for us. I mean, the staging was cool. We yeah. had Coatsman, we had sax. We had, like, notes of disco balls, I think. Mm -hmm. I, it was like... That wedding was so. Uh, I, I'm seeing all the footage come in, and I'm like, oh, yeah. You remember that wedding? Like, what do you, what did you love about that one? Yeah, everything. I mean, so so first of all, Courtney was Courtney's awesome. Oh my god, <laughs> just one of one of the best people to work with. And I remember when Courtney Courtney's mom actually reached out to me first. So a lot of times I'll get like the mom, and then I I get to meet the bride, and she liked that I wore Converse's. Um, that was like her oh, draw to me. Yeah. So she was like, oh, well, if she wears Converse's. That's my people. She must be cool. Yeah. <laughs> and from the beginning, I knew Courtney was a little bit edgier, but still soft and romantic in her own sure. way. So we had to blend these two of like, how do we how do we bring that black edginess in, but still have it feel like a wedding, well, like a wedding. and still be pretty and like she's so gorgeous. So the entire design was really based on her and her personality. We also pulled in TC as an electrician. So all of the Edison bulbs were put in for TC and, and a nod sense. to his electrician um, background. So we everything about it was like so personal to them. But I will say she was one of my clients that blindly trusted mm. and turned everything over to me, but not in a non-communicative way. Like right. she would talk to me constantly, but it was always like. Uh, here's what I like make and it and then affirm pretty. affirm that you can go and do yes. your thing yeah yeah which is our best events truly oh my god that, I mean that wedding the way it ended too I remember even you know it ended with uh the the final song and the co-sparks were going and they were on the stage yep. with flex and I was just like 
that for me um as a business owner as a creative the fact that we were able to you know as a vendor team like all come together and create that moment like you cannot forget that even their mm -hmm. fa family friends and i talked to courtney now just in another context he works for party slate now but just always thinking about that moment and how all those elements of design the the vendors the the videography the photo all coming together to create that moment was so dope and uh still wanting my one of my favorite weddings to date and i wasn't even a part of it yeah no it, it is and <laughs> it that so one good. will always be on the charts for being one of my favorites too and just the all the different experiences that she allowed us to bring in for um her yeah. and for her guests it was just no that was that was, was super top dope. notch for sure and now south seas unfortunately like kind of like the year after that kind of took a big hit with the hurricane so yeah it, so i don't even know how south seas looks right now but man uh I think they have a trajectory of beginning Pretty of 2024. Soon, right? like I think they've even booked weddings into May, if I'm yeah, not hopefully. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm ready to so. get back out there at some point. Um, For sure. So right now, you're in. A, it seems like you're in a really cool place in your career because now you're starting to even help out um, other industry people, mm -hmm. planners, even my sister-in-law, mm -hmm. um, with like starting their businesses. So obviously, you're a creative and you know the marketing side of stuff and. But what does the business side mean to you and even helping mentoring people start their own, you know, wedding businesses? Yeah, sure. Um, so I am very much like I have this mantra that I say to myself all the time, which is C and C's. So like when I see opportunity, I seize opportunity. There it is. And um, and I was at a conference that uh, not a conference. Um, Corinne's going to be like, I took you there. <laughs> what is the name of it? Um, it was a meeting up in Sarasota. Was it sw the swell? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and coffees and conversations was yes. it that one or another one? Yeah, it was. Know. It was, but they, yeah, it, but they split us into tables. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. so mm -hmm. Corinne had a table, Kelly had a table, Kelly had to leave early, um, and so I took over. And there were a couple of girls that ended up staying after, and and they were like, "Well, do you ever offer coaching?" Which, funny enough, yes, but it was all very like under the radar, Informal. like yeah. And um, and so I saw it as an opportunity to launch the beta for handbook pro and so we did and uh we're on week we just did week six this morning it's an eight so what's program. handbook pro so handbook pro is a a, colla a collaboration not collaboration a conglomeration mm. there's the word i'm looking for of different types of reviewer services that can help your business so for example we offer individual one-on-one -on -one coaching so if you don't want to be in a group setting if you think that like your mm -hmm. learning style is really more a one-on-one -on -one and digging in um, we can do that we also do uh, deep dives into your marketing because my master's degree is in marketing so makes sense if you want to hire us just to look at your website, your branding, like everything that you have going on from yeah. like a social and a Google and an SEO perspective, we'll do that. Um, and then now newly the group coaching. So what we're planning on doing is taking the group coaching that is in person. We're actually going to summarize everything from this eight weeks, all the questions. We're going to put it into an online course and then we'll sell yes. that so that you'll have the option of the in person if we see a need for that. But we'll also have it where you can buy the recorded and do the homework and then oh, that's really cool yeah you feel like that's been working out as far as you feel like you've been seeing good like results for people and yeah well we have um i mean we'll use monica's gonna be like you yeah. just took this advantage to shout out monica <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, let's do it yeah but um but monica's like my my star student yeah. so what i love about this is there, it's kind of twofold so we started kiss to cake which is our month of day of it's really like our what we call a wedding day management um yeah solution for our clients and when i was thinking about like who i wanted to work kiss to cake because it's not me working the weddings i decided okay well i need to start getting with some of these newer planners in the area that don't have a way to get experience yeah. that um i know it's harder sometimes there are planners that are a little bit more proprietary about like what they do so it can be intimidating to pick up the phone and ask a planner if you can shatter them and so i thought okay well kiss to kate could be like a really cool way for new planners to get the right experience which is yeah. only going to help clients in the future because they'll be taught the right way because yeah. a lot of people i think want to do this but maybe just haven't had the opportunity to really learn how to set a table or learn you know what do we do when we're talking about planning in the day of etc um 
And then with uh, with Wedding uh, Hero Handbook Pro, which we've kind of shortened down to Handbook Pro, yeah. um, that almost become, was starting as a feeder. So like anybody who needs experience. But the funny thing is, is that like with Monica, I quickly identify that Monica does like amazing balloon work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, was, like, she had a bunch of balloons in her house the other day, just blowing up balloons. I'm sure those were my balloons. They were <laughs> yeah. probably my balloons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were. <laughs> yes, probably. So um, I we have helped her to set up her website and yeah. launch her brand and start the LLC and all I'm of these things. For it. I'm excited yeah. for it. Yeah, but I think I think they're really intimidating. I think that when you because I remember the feeling. I remember I, I wasn't an entrepreneur. I was working for a corporate company. Somebody else did all of that. Like I didn't worry about LLCs and yeah. S corps and how that's structured and taxes and things like that. So we take all of that down to simple, like eight steps. Here's yeah. what you have to do to like get this business off the ground. And then we help you really fine tune. Like, who are you targeting? What are you doing? What are you offering? How are you going to position yourself in the market so that you're, you're spending your energy in the right way? Man, because so. that seems like, Jana, like the LLC and escort part and all that stuff, but like that's hard just because it's practical. The right. harder part, I feel like for me and our industry friends and everyone that hops into this thing is, is that second part you said. Yeah. Who is the client I want to work with? Who is like, like that is such a hard like thing to narrow down because it's so intimidating. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, so how do you, what's your advice to anyone listening that's trying to figure out who their ideal like I feel like that's the buzz buzzword of sure. the year. Ideal client. Like what is your what is your take on it? Well, I start I start them by they create their own character. So like who are you? Who do you want to be? So like M Monica is now Moni. So yeah, I like it. I, I like um, a lot. <laughs> and funny story, like if you if you knew me when I was at Hertz, I had very long blonde hair. I wore a lot of pink, like a shameful yeah. amount of pink. And um, when I started this business, I wanted to look in the mirror and authentically believe that I would be somebody that could design a $100,000 wedding and, and could be trusted with that process. And when I looked in the mirror and I saw a lot of Lily Pulitzer, I just didn't believe myself. I really didn't believe myself. So Wait, is Lily Pulitzer the, the, the pink, green, blue? Yeah, so many patterns. Okay, yeah, 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 all yeah, the patterns. I, 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 I know when I see it, I go, that's, I know what that is. I just don't know what it's, <laughs> right? what it is. Right. Okay. That's it. Gotcha. And, um, and so I have them identify firstly, if you could be anybody, not meaning that you are not your authentic self because your authentic self is here. Like sure. it's, it's inside. You're not changing that. Yeah. Your values and your morals don't change. But if you could be anybody, the person that you believed could be the most successful version of yourself, who is that? And so we start there. That's like they have to map that yeah. out. They have to map out who that person is. And if you could be anybody in the world, okay, what would that person look like? And so we have them adopt. Like a celebrity, a movie star? or Anything. Like, like if you looked in the mirror, I mean, I don't want you to pick somebody else. You still have to be you. Okay. I was like, like wait, they could pick like, I want to be Beyonce. You know, You're like, no, you can't be however, Beyonce. However, like what are the characteristics of Beyonce? Oh, Beyonce? What is it that you want to emulate about Beyonce? Like if that's really what it is. And then you look at yourself and if you are trying to sell a product that Beyonce is going to sell... Do you yeah. emulate what Beyonce has going right. on? Because if you don't, you might have a hard time selling what Beyonce you is selling. You have to work on your dance moves, you know? Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Dang, we, okay. we have them start there. And then we have them look at their... So we, we have them analyze themselves and really what they like, what they are familiar with, what they're comfortable with. And then we flip that and we create a customer. So uh -huh. they name their customer. They tell me, where does your customer... Now, what's really interesting is they don't know entirely what they're doing until we analyze. We do this over weeks. Right. So um, I'll say, okay, so where where would your customer shop? And if you come back to me and you tell me Prada and Saks and they're driving a Tesla, then we probably know who your target market mm, is. That's good. If you come back to me and you tell me target and yeah. maybe some lululemon like then we know you know what i mean so like mm. it's there are distinct targets markets and it doesn't make one better than the other they're just different yeah and you got what i've learned is i like that because i i think just this past year i realized that the things that i buy and the luxuries that i like my clients are probably gonna like too probably yeah you know and so like when i show up to a wedding especially because you know i really i really try to incorporate style and fashion into my brand into my the experience you do it well 
Thank you. And so when I show up to a wedding, like my favorite thing is when my bride or my groom is like, yo, that watch, man. Yeah. Or, the, or we're matching shoes. There's been times where me and the groom are matching shoes or the same brand of shoes. And he's like, bro, those shoes. I'm like, come on. That's a part of the experience for me. And it's yeah. like, when that, or that happens, it's like, oh, the, the world aligned. It's perfect. Yeah. You know? And so that's really cool that you even coach them and talk to them about like brands. What does your customer, your client want to buy? Because yeah. that, that will align with what they're interested in. So that, that's really good. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, it's, man. It's, it's a whole journey. And you cannot you people buy from people they are comfortable being around and so Mm. if you are a person who is decked out in all brand names and you are wearing a 400 hundred dollar t-shirt someone whose budget is in a maybe mid or lower tier is not going to be comfortable with you like (laughs) they're they're just not they're gonna be like what (laughs) right like it so you have to identify like who are you selling to and then sell to that market See, so do you, what, what if there are, I heard um, there's a planner that said, we were talking about the same thing. She mentioned like, I speak to couples, they buy a certain brand and all these different things, but I don't necessarily buy that myself. Mm-hmm. I just make sure that my business speaks that language. Yeah, I think that's And fair. I was like, dang, that's that's still good because I don't necessarily buy, I'm not going to go buy, like I, <laughs> I had a wedding in Vegas and I. I walked through the mall and there was like, it was a Gucci and YSL and, you know, I've never bought that. Like I've, there's a suit that I wanted to get was like out of this world expensive. And like, this isn't, this is the brand that I like. I just can't afford it. Like, you know, but it's the language that I'm speaking. I just, my, my, uh, my tax bracket doesn't work that way yet, but (laughs) one day, (laughs) but one day, you know, but, but, uh, no. So that's bringing me to my next sort of like thought. And it's about this word. I think the most overused word in our industry, and I don't have to say it, but mm-hmm. anyone listening will know, but this word of luxury, mm-hmm. okay, um, probably has different meanings at this point mm-hmm. to everyone, mm-hmm. but I was telling you off camera that the other day, me and Yaz were next to this like low-income apartment. It was in a really bad neighborhood, um, and I mean, the place was beaten down. I don't know if anyone even lived there. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, but it said, you know, whatever, whatever luxury apartments. And I was just like, you know, no offense to that, the people that live there, or whatever, but it's it's like, I would, I'm sure people would have a different opinion on what luxury is, sure. you know? So to you and in your, from your vantage point, like what the hell is luxury? An experience. And here's the most interesting thing. If you go into a Ritz Carlton and the Ritz Carlton doesn't make your bed every day because they're still on whatever COVID regulations, but you go into a Homewood Suites and they come in and they give you fresh towels and they make up your bed and they like fold your chargers all nice. Which one is luxury? Ooh. I mean, what feels like luxury is the home wood. Right. So like, like that experience. The function, the experience of they folded my towel into a bird. Right. Every right. day. Whereas you know? the Ritz didn't give you any new towels. Right. Like you had to go down and find the housekeeping Yo, closet. can someone please, I just need, <laughs> I gotta take a shower. That's right, right. Please, I, dude, I've, I've gone in the hallway and just taken the towels from the cart. Yeah. Give me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, I think what people, what they miss a lot of times when we're thinking about luxury is like society tells us what luxury is and they, they put a dollar sign on it. But what's really interesting from a marketing perspective is luxury means so much to different people and it can go in any direction. But most of us who fall into the trap of luxury just become walking billboards, right? Mm. So like the person who is carrying the Louis Vuitton bag is a walking billboard for For Louis Louis Vuitton. Vuitton. And there's something called quiet luxury where the most expensive Louis Vuitton bags have no logo. No logo. And you just know if you know. You know if you know, you know. So I think think luxury has different levels. And for some people, it means... A brand for other people, it means, um, you know, an experience. That and I think is... ultimately, like, really what comes down to luxury is like the ability to be able to trust and not think. And so that's what mm. we try to provide is, is it doesn't matter if you are spending a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand, the entire experience is still going to feel seamless because Mm. we are doing everything for you reducing that down to a few decisions that you have to make 
you don't have to have anxiety or worry right. or any of these right. things that keep you up at night. And that's what we focus on. Because there's nothing like walking into the Ritz, JW, whatever, four seasons, and it's just flowing, right? Like, it, there's a level of luxury in the sense of I don't have to make the decisions. They're kind right. of made for me. Yep. Um, it's accessible. You know, one of my favorite hotels now in Florida is a Tampa edition. Mm. Um, and it's just like you go in there, the smell for me, when you talk about the experience, you walk in and you just smell every, like every shampoo, every lotion is of the same scent. Yep. So it's just like to me, when you can ignite the senses, when you can give the experience for me, like as far as it pertains to weddings, when I'm giving a luxury experience, even though I hate that word right now, but right. it's like. I ignited as many senses, as many sensory things as I could. I gave people an experience. And to me, that's like, that was a luxury. The fact that Malik knew, I put it, I inputted some information about where we're from and who we are. And he just, he played my favorite songs from college. And how did he know that? And yeah, intuitive. It's intuitive. Yeah, like the intuition, all those things is like, yeah, you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. You yeah, know, you, you didn't have to coach me through like, but please, like halfway through the night, can you please make sure you play this? And then the end of the night, can you? No, 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 I got you. Right, right. I, you and know? it's anticipating the needs of your clients before they come to you. I often mm, tell my good. people, if you, if they have asked you, we have failed. Ooh. Like if they send us an email and say, hey, where are we on this? When are we going to? We have failed. Ooh, that's... So like we, that, that to me is the biggest fall is whenever somebody writes me and is like can we get a status update then that means i have not done, that my job done our job right. yeah we we you know when we talk to our clients we're like hey just to let you know we send them a welcome packet and let them know like how we're going to work together yep. with them and we're like hey we're going to check in with you even if you don't check in with us it's not that we're going to bug you but we want to be ahead of it like yeah. hey do you want to you know and and so but that's really good that if if they've asked you you've pretty because yeah if i have to ask for the towels up to the room that's right if I, you know, can I get a refill on it? You know, like it should be when I go out and come back, it's, it's there. It's there. And you're like, wow. That's really, I like that. I like that. Do, do you feel like, do you, do you feel like all of us in, in the wedding industry just take that out of our bios and our titles? Yes, I do actually. <laughs> I, I think, I think the new words are elevated, curated, yeah. like anything. And, and I mean, I think you can put it in there. But, <laughs> no, you got to you got to take it out. We we have it in our curate bio still, um, just for SEO. But I, but okay. But what if client? So so we uh, as the the business knows maybe has a better definition of luxury. But what about the clients and the couples who are technically looking for a luxury wedding vendor? Do you mm -hmm. think they're searching that? Like why are, why are we so obsessed with it as vendors? Mm -hmm. Do we think that the couples are obsessed with it? Mm -mm. No, I think I think that people from a sensory perspective are going to look you can put luxury in your bio all day long. But if your photos don't reflect they luxury, don't feel it. right, you know, whereas I think honestly, I think a lot of couples are going to luxury venues and they're seeing who's tagged. And this is like one of my biggest things that I, I was talking to my uh, class today about was like, it, if you are going to post on social media. Yeah. And you do not tag every single person okay. who was involved okay. in that wedding. You have missed such an opportunity because the first thing that I do when I go on Instagram is I hit tagged photos. That little person button in the corner. That's right. See how it pops. I look through. I'll, ta I'll tag you. I'll put you in the description. Yo, like, because even location wise, mm -hmm. tag the location. Because what do people do? They hit yep. high at Coconut Point and then everything from high. They just start, you know, yo, these bride and grooms, they're scrolling yes through a whole feed yes. of everything so yes. yeah that that's and tagged. it's twofold i mean like you know these creative partners that you help to elevate their business come on they, i mean the loyalty that you can build between yourself and another creative partner by acknowledging that they were part of this and it was not just a one woman show over here then yeah. then not only are you going to now exist forever on their feed but you've also shown them that they meant something more than just a single day like yeah. it's just it's really really important um, but I do think that they're going to places like Ritz Carlton, La Playa, and they're hitting that tagged and you better be in that feed, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, because that's yeah. how they're finding their people. Yeah, man. Um, what's your, what's your take on, uh, cause you're marketing. What's your take on the verified Instagram whole I, thing? Did you do it? I'm about to, I want, I kind of, I do that. This is what I do with anything beta or any like updates for like iOS. I always wait 
for the first wave to go. Yep. And I go, how is it over there? Good? And then I go. So I'm about to do it. But You want to know what's so funny about that? So a client called me the other day. When did you get verified? <laughs> no way. When did you get verified? And I was like, oh, like a month ago. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Because they have no idea. They don't know that's how to met a verified. crazy. They don't know anything. I mean, truly, like the... The majority of people who are going to be the because so in social media there are consumers yeah. of social media and there are creators. So I always tell my <laughs> my students too, do not be a consumer. Please right. don't waste your time like scrolling Just through scrolling. TikTok. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but you are going to be a creator. So most of the people who are on the consumer side have no idea about Meta Verified and that the blue check is very different. I know that there are maybe some phase two, phase three things yeah. that might show that difference eventually. But for right now, soak up the goodness of yeah, everyone yeah. assuming that you are just a badass <laughs> by being meta verified. And like, there's this whole stigma like, oh, you paid for it. It's like, yeah, but I also pay for like listings. I I pay to be on Google. Like, just be like, I don't think anyone ever goes, oh wow, they pay rent at their building. Wow, why would they pay for that? Even if people know you paid for the service, it's like there's no harm in doing that as well. And you get the protection that you get like better customer service. Like, well, and I would even venture to be like, yeah, they did. Like, they how are smart. How smart and how invested are they into yeah. what they're doing? Like, yeah. And I also think like we spend an inordinate amount of time looking at other people. Like, if everyone just focused on being the best that they could be, then we wouldn't even have to worry about that. And anybody who's wasting their time worrying about why you paid for a blue check mark probably needs to internally look at their business a little <laughs> bit closer. So, you know, I think that it has a lot of value. I also think that if you can run your business in a vacuum and you can flush out all the noise of anybody who's looking at you and wondering what you're doing, you'll be so much more successful. Well, Jenna, I, you know, it's funny because you found out about Engage like super early because you intentionally went and found it. I didn't really go to any networking anything until like 10 years into my career. Mm. Like I didn't even show I didn't even know any other DJs outside of like some of the friends here. I didn't really go to any conference. Engage was my first ever wedding conference, you know? So, and I've been, I was doing it for 12 years up to that point, you know? Yeah. So for me, it was like, you can get far without a lot of the, you know, like just the, the playing the game. Sure, you can yeah. just create, just be, be good, be good, be a good person, and just be good. <laughs> just be good, and you don't. Re so I know people who aren't even on Instagram. Who and and really, if we want to talk about it, the luxury wedding planners and vendors don't even touch their Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but they're you know the. Planners are using the same people and they're getting doing billionaires' weddings. And I'm like, what? You don't post any reels though. It's like, yeah, yeah because they just do good work. Yeah, and, sure. And, and it goes a long way. Proceeds, right? Yeah. So, yeah, anyone, you know, because people are always like, man, you do so well on Instagram. I'm like, and that's our avenue, but you might have another way. You, you know, people work engaged or they go to a lot of networking events or they use listings. I'm like, do whatever works for you. I don't sure. know, whatever works for you. But, um, but as, as far as y you and just how, uh, I and my I've learned a lot about more about what you do and who you are through Monica and just we're talking more. But I, I really admire not just what you do, but how you do it. Thank you. Um, from a wedding planning perspective, but also like helping other people, helping other creatives and businesses and creative entrepreneurs do mm -hmm. what they do. Like it's it's super dope. And uh, um, I just want to just give you uh, just big up you on that because it's it's really cool. And I love what you're doing. I love I love your design. It's like. Every time I see your design, there's some like statement piece, and I'm like, oh, that's totally oh yeah, Jenna. we do. You we do, do just so good piece. at the statement pieces, yeah. and um, again, like I said, you're just great to work with, and so just want to say thank you for coming. I feel like I keep talking to you, um, but I'm, I got the I got the time five minutes ago. So just uh, um, <laughs> before we get out of here, is there anything uh, you want to say or just end off with? No, I mean, I, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you for yeah. allowing me to come on. I feel like we've only been talking for five no, minutes, so that's funny. <laughs> um, but no, I you, I think I look around the room and I'm like, man, if, if this is what you built without finding Engage until 12 years <laughs> in, you should be pretty darn pretty darn Thank proud, you. right? Thank you, man. No, it's, so. it's been great. And thanks for whenever you uh, send us a, a lead or anything, I we really appreciate it. And thanks so much for trusting us for with Thanks your, for with making us look good. Heck yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, girl. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace out.